Today, I want to share with you why I don't use GitHub Copilot anymore and why I think it can be harmful to developers, especially juniors and students learning to code. I have been using Copilot since I got the invite for the early preview a long time ago. I disabled it a couple of months ago to record a new course and I left it disabled ever since. Since disabling it, I realized I changed as a developer in a way that I did not like. In the book Deep Work by Cal Newport, he talks about how most people adopt new technologies simply because they exist without actually evaluating if using them helps them achieve their goals and produce meaningful work. Most of us operate under the assumption that all technological advancements are inherently beneficial and we assume something is useful just because it's new or trendy. Since there are many channels constantly hyping up AI and showing you all the cool things it can do, I thought it would be good to provide a counter view and share with you how I think AI not only does not help you, but can actually make you a worse developer. To be clear, I think GitHub Copilot and AI are in general very useful and beneficial and there is a lot of value in using them. But I also think there is a time and a place for everything. And the time and place for AI isn't everywhere and all the time. First, I want to tell you why I think if you are learning to code, if you are a student, Copilot and ChatGPT can be your enemies rather than friends. I used to think that learning to code in the era of GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT would be better and easier than when I learned to code more than a decade and a half ago. But I was very wrong. Since using Copilot, every time I try to learn a new language, 10 out of 10 times I end up disabling it sooner rather than later. Using Copilot when learning to code robbed me of the struggle. It gave me the illusion that I was learning because I was writing code in a new language faster. I felt productive in that language quicker and I fixed errors in no time. But it all felt very shallow. Nothing really clicked in my brain. It all felt very synthetic and not real. Like drinking processed orange juice. It looks like orange juice, it tastes like orange juice, it may have some orange, but it is mostly sugar and artificial flavor. It does not give you the vitamins that a real orange will. I think that learning requires struggle. Learning shouldn't feel comfortable. It should not be a walk in the park. It should feel like climbing a mountain. Copilot and ChatGPT give you the answers without the sweat. Even if the answers were of the highest quality, which they aren't, and I'll get to that soon, getting answers does not teach you. It is the journey to that answer that teaches you in a deeper level and makes new concepts click in your brain in a permanent way. The same goes for having an error and Googling it immediately, which isn't ideal, but it isn't as bad as asking ChatGPT. At least when you Google an error and go to Stack Overflow, you can see multiple answers and humans arguing why an answer is good or bad. ChatGPT, on the other hand, it gives you only one answer and it is convinced that it is the correct one when in some cases it is not. And if you are learning a newish programming language or library, ChatGPT and Copilot become schizophrenic and hallucinate most of the time. Learning to read errors and knowing how to debug them is a very important skill that is only developed by getting slapped in the face with error messages and going line by line of your program with the debugger to understand what caused the error. Getting a quick fix to an error robs you of that experience. Mistakes and bugs, even the dumbest ones, are the best teachers. Nothing beats the experience of doing things wrong and then understanding why they're wrong and fixing them on your own. Getting fed all the answers to an exam does not create the same connections in your brain that studying for an exam does. Since our brains are programmed to take the path of least effort, having a tool that removes the struggle from the learning process can make you dependent in those tools. Which is why I think that Microsoft giving Copilot for free to students is an evil, evil trap. Before smartphones, people used to be better and quicker at everyday math. Now you see people use calculators even for the most basic calculations. If you want to see how dependent you are to Copilot, go and write some code with Copilot disabled and see how often you write something and pause waiting for Copilot to autocomplete and give you the answer. In conclusion, when learning to code, I think struggle is required. Being uncomfortable isn't optional and we should feel tired after a study session. Our brain should feel like it just did a workout. I believe that any tool that removes the struggle and just gives you an answer should be seen as a placebo for learning and a trap. On the topic of code quality, it's important to remember that GitHub Copilot and ChatGPT were trained in all publicly available code. And most of that code isn't high quality code. There are studies that show that developer productivity increases when using Copilot. And while that may be true, there are other studies that also show that using Copilot is strongly correlated with code churn. Code churn is the percentage of lines of code that are reverted or replaced in a small period of time. This means that Copilot is generating code that either has mistakes or is suboptimal, leading to an increase of maintenance and refactor time. The same study also found that Copilot discourages code reuse and the dry principle. Don't repeat yourself. This makes sense since Copilot never suggests you refactor an existing function. It always gives you new code, which according to the study is what encourages copy-pasted and duplicated code to 
grow, which is a nightmare for future developers to maintain. Experienced developers know when a copilot suggestion is good or not because they have a standard. They have a bar they build with years of experience of what makes good and bad code. Junior developers or developers learning a new language don't have that bar yet. So it is too easy to upload the thinking to Copilot, accept the solutions it comes up with, and ending up picking up bad habits and producing bad work. For experienced developers, I think Copilot can do less damage than for juniors. But the option of offloading thinking to Copilot is always there, especially if you want to move fast and be productive. Problem solving is a skill, and if you don't practice a skill, you will slowly lose it and become bad at it. The more you let Copilot solve problems for you, the worse you become at problem solving. I think what makes me valuable as a developer is my ability to solve problems and not my ability to read Copilot generated code. So I choose to practice the skill I want to get good at. Maybe I'm too sleep deprived and paranoid since I just became a father, but it seems crazy to me that I am paying Microsoft to use Copilot. Microsoft uses my code and behavior to train Copilot and make it better, while I become dependent on Copilot and my skills suffer as a result. I know that in the comments someone will say, oh, it's a skill issue, or the tool isn't the problem, it's how you use the tool. And I sort of agree. Maybe I am using Copilot wrong and I am lazy for relying too much on it, but I don't think I'm the only one. And I I think the tool in this case is very easy to misuse. You could use Copilot only for boilerplate code and reject every suggestion it gives you when you have to problem solve. But I think those suggestions will anyways influence the way you write code. They may give you decision fatigue and they may remove the struggle of problem solving. And at that point, why are you paying for a tool that you have to consciously avoid to use? I wish Copilot had a boilerplate only mode where it auto completes repetitive code and sits quietly in the corner when it's time to problem solve. This is just my opinion and I know there is a big chance I am wrong and it's all my fault. But since disabling Copilot, I feel much better about the code that I write. And when I learn or use something new, the knowledge feels more solid in my head. I feel like I own the code that I wrote and that I understand the solutions I come up with more deeply because they weren't just given to me. They were earned by struggling and learning along the way, which I think makes me a better software developer in the long run. Again, this is just my opinion. Maybe your experience is different or maybe you have a product manager breathing down your neck asking you feature after feature. And all you want to do is finish and go enjoy your Friday night. Or maybe you have to write lots of boilerplate code, which is where Copilot shines the most. You should use whatever you like and what you think helps you do your work better. If it's Copilot, then use Copilot. If it's something else, then use something else. Personally, I don't think I will enable Copilot anytime soon. And when I do, I will let you know why. That's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.